So guys, the decorators are in today. They are getting this bathroom sorted. All the woodwork has been primed. Any knots have been filled and treated with knotting solution. Doors are off ready so they can get them done. They've got everything sanded where they need to be. We have to do a bit of a modification here, as you can see, because we've fitted some lights under here. So that's gonna light this alcove up really nicely. We've moved the light from over there, so that's been filled as well. Uh, so yeah, we're, they're gonna crack on with here, in here today, um, probably tomorrow, and then by then they'll be finished. Uh, the doors, these doors have actually got to be completely stripped off because as you can see, the paint's in a bit of a sorry state. So we've got to strip these back completely before they're painted. Same in here as well. Let's go downstairs and see what's going on down there. So we've got plasterers and electricians in here today. The electricians are just marking out for where the down lights are going to go. So we're using the tornado fitting, which is a trimless fitting. So they'll fit, same as upstairs in the bathroom. They'll actually go into the ceiling and there's no shroud around it exposed. You literally just have the light which pokes down, which is a really nice feature. And then obviously plasters are in, so we're going to get all this plastered out. So as usual, I'll set up some time lapses and you can see the progress through the day. So today we've got more progress. We've got our amazing roofer Will. Hi Will. How's it going? Morning folks. Cool, cool. So he is going to be getting this roof sorted out. As you've seen, we've got all these beautiful windows in and Will is going to finish it off nicely with our lovely slate and lead work. So as you can see, we've got some temporary felt on there. So the next process will be to get the undercloaking on, which will run along the sides here, and then get the battens run across as well. That way then we'll be fully watertight inside, and then he'll work his way back across, getting all the slates on and all the lead work, all the lead flashing up and across here. So guys, I am upstairs in our bathroom now and as you can see, the decorators have nearly finished. Look at that. So we've had the guys in from Chris Foster, painter and decorators, and as usual, they've done an excellent job. Clients have decided to go for the darker coving, skirting, just to match in with the vanity unit, which looks, hopefully as you'll agree, really, really effective. So we've got to just get the doors done. Pete's downstairs now getting those all stripped because we're using the existing ones, as you've probably seen from the video of how to square up a door. So we're going to be using those ones. All we need to do now then is get them bits finished up, get this unit finished off, get the bath in, and that is about it for in here. So they will be able to use their nice bathroom at last. They're also done in here as well in the toilet. It's a dark paint, but it actually is really effective in this room. Got this lovely toilet bar holding on the wall as well. Vanity units in there, you've got to get the mirror on, which is also backlit with LEDs. Today as well, I'm gonna be fitting the sculpture in this area in here. So it's a backlit sculpture, which is all a, a, like a metal with LEDs all at the back of it. So I've got to get that fitted in there, which is gonna be a nice job for me today. And that is about it. So yeah, I'll check back in soon. So today we're gonna to crack on with some plastering. I'm going back to my roots and doing a bit of skimming with them, so I'll be jumping up on the stilts today. We're going to get this ceiling done, get this wall done, get the floor ready for the tiler who is coming on Monday. Then once the tiling's completed, then we will do the rest of the plastering. As you can see, it's looking really good now. It's starting to take shape and look like a room. You can actually see how effective these windows are going to be, you know, once it's actually all decorated and finished. It's going to let in so much natural light in here. It looks really nice. So what I'll do is I will set up a time lapse and you can watch us getting this plaster in dirt. We're going to see Chris upstairs. So he is just working on these doors. 
So what we're doing is, as we mentioned before, using the old original doors from the house. Unfortunately, they were in a pretty sorry state, so Pete's managed to get them all sanded down, and now Chris is gonna do an excellent job of getting these back to their former glory. The bathroom's near enough done. We've just got the spark in today to finish all this off. This is the control center for two rooms up here. The sculpture is in, which is looking really nice. Hopefully you'll agree. So behind that is actually loads and loads of LEDs all intertwined behind all these branches. So that'll be plugged in through here and it'll be operated from the switch before going to switch outside. So it'll be a nice bit of mood lighting. We've got these lovely pendants up here as well. The bath's in as well. That's just gonna be tested today. So the next process is downstairs. So we've got the kitchen fitters coming on Thursday. So they'll be fitting units Floor to ceiling all the way across here, and then just standard base units. Well, not standard, but they are base units running all the way around here, and then there'll be an island in the middle here. So guys, my job for the minute is fitting the doorknobs. The client has gone for these lovely white knobs with a uh, brushed stainless steel backing plate, as you can see. So they're gonna go on here nicely. As these are original doors, we're kind of governed by the original hole. We could fill these and redo it, but they're actually not quite nicely uh, situated. This one, because it's an airing cupboard, we don't have to have a lock on. The ones over there, that door and the toilet door out there as well, they do need locks on. So we're using two tubular latches rather than a mortise, um, purely because the tenon comes through here. So we don't want to destroy most of that because obviously then it will weaken the door. So we're using these tubular latches. Uh, when you're choosing these, what it's important to do is make sure you spec them correctly. Because we're using a door knob, it's important, obviously not so much on this one, it's not going to be that much of an issue, but on a door such as this, when you're closing the door, you need to make sure that the door knob is out enough away from the door frame. Because otherwise what's going to happen is, when you close that door, your hand is going to get trapped in between the door knob and the door frame, and obviously it's going to hurt. So it's important that you make sure the back set, which is the measurement from the spigot hole there to the back of the back plate, the back set is set enough through so that your handle is going to be situated away from it, your door knob, sorry. If you had a handle, it wouldn't be as much of an issue because obviously your hand stays there, it pulls them out of the way. But obviously something to bear in mind if you ever fit in one of these. So what I'll do is set up a time lapse and you can watch me put one in. So guys, it's Monday morning, and as you've seen from the time lapse, we've got the ceiling plastered at the weekend. We've also got this floor in here primed with a Primer G, with a one-to-one -one ratio, as recommended by the manufacturers. So it's all ready for the tiders who are here. So we've got some lovely large format tiles, which are 1200 by 1200. Hi, Greg. Hi, John. Greg, as you probably recognised from the last episode, did our tiling upstairs. He's our regular tiler. We really like his work, so that's why we keep getting him back. <laughs> so yeah, I'll go and show you the tiles. There we go. So these are beautiful stone effect tile. Really, really nice. We're gonna have the same tiles as these outside as well. They've got a slightly different finish on them though, when we use them outside, because that means that obviously when it's wet, you don't slip over. So what we're gonna do is in here, we're gonna work full tile from this corner and then work our way back through the room. Obviously the reason we're doing this is because when we go outside with the tiles, we want everything to run through nicely, so we'll carry that line straight up there outside. Greg is currently now putting down, what's this Greg? It's called a CI matting, mate. CI matting, so it's yeah. a decoupling, decoupling matting, yeah? Membrane. Yeah, correct. And what's that actually do then? This, uh, well, other name is the anti-fracture mat, so it just stops um, you get any cracks coming from the floor, heat transfer, etc. Um, it takes it away from the tiles, so. So because we've got underfloor heating yeah, under here, obviously the floor can expand yeah. and contract, can't it? So at least there becomes like a slip on the floor, so it will slip with the adhesive underneath. Right. 
hit this in the plastic and it will not transfer through to the toilets. Awesome. That's why we use it. Brilliant. Really good stuff. Okay, so basically the process will be now, Greg will get this all down, cover the complete floor, and then we can let, get the tiles laid down. So what I'll do is, as usual, time lapse it so you can watch his progress. So guys, some great progress has been made yet again. Here are the tiles in the kitchen. As you can see, we've gone for the 1200 by 1200 format. Hopefully you'll agree they look amazing in this room. Originally we were gonna go for some slightly smaller tiles, but after some consultation with the clients, we decided to go for the larger format, because in this shape of room, it's really, really opened it up. Uh, we've got a bit of paint on the walls in here as well, as you may have seen from the time-lapse earlier. So Greg came in last night and grouted everything up. So what I'm gonna do now is protect the floor with this RAM board. This is a product that we use, available from local builders merchants. We've got this from Travis Perkins. Uh, it's really good stuff. Normally we use Antinox, which is like a plastic covering, but what that can have a tendency to do is to sweat. So any moisture that's in the air can obviously gather up underneath it, forming a condensation, which should obviously keep the substrate that's on wet, which we don't want. So this stuff here is like a cardboard, which is actually breathable. So it lets water come through from underneath the board, but not actually penetrate down, which is ideal for surfaces like this. So what I'm gonna do is get this fully protected now. I'll uh, leave it slightly off the walls because the units are gonna be fitted in here tomorrow. So the uh, kitchen fitters haven't got to worry about kissing any of this out of the way and our floor is protected. And I'm also gonna get the skirting on around these little areas too. As usual, time lapse will be done and you can watch what we're doing. So, we're gonna do a little bit of a modification to this little deck area here. So, what happened was, as you remember, probably from earlier on in this episode, actually. All right, Fuzz? Hello, mate, how's it going? All right, all right. Make sure you follow Fuzz on Instagram. It's at Chris Foster Painters and Decorators. He's very, very good. You can see all his work up on there. He does an excellent job. That's why we use him all the time in our jobs, because his finish is perfect. So, as I was saying, on this bit here, we've extended this opening here to allow the ceiling to run all the way through, like this. All the way through nicely like that, yeah? Because before, there was a big bulkhead here, so we've raised that up, put lintels in, so it's nice and tidy, it looks seamless all the way through. So yeah, because we opened this up, this has obviously affected the floor down here. As you can see, this is where the floor was before, and this piece here, as you can see, where the walls have been dabbed, it's obviously come past where the original line was of the wall. So what we're gonna do is bring this out here, put a plant on the front of this, and then obviously bring this nosing out as well to suit. So this will all look nice and finished here. So what I'm doing at the minute is sorting out this step. So this is the original nosing. Obviously it's upside down, but there's nails there. So it was fitted back here, and when we've plasterboarded both sides, it means that this nosing, this step edge, is now too far back. So what we need to do is extend it, so it will sit past here, 25 mil past the face of the plaster. 
so what I'm gonna do, like you can see, is I've got some PSE here. I'm gonna bring this out, I'll pack it out so it's nice and square, square with the room, and it will enable us then to bring the skirting line right the way through to give a nice detail, and I'll also return it up here and round in there as well. Uh, what the clients are going to do is actually carpet this area, so we were originally going to replace all this but there's no need now. What we'll do is we'll put some 3 mil ply over the top of that just to make sure this is nice and, uh, and nice and flat so when they put their carpet down over time it's not going to go with the, the surface of the floorboards. You'll actually keep it a be much better area to work on, to walk on sorry. Uh, so yeah what we'll do is set you up a little time lapse so you can watch me do this process. Hi guys, so today is a milestone in this project series because the kitchen is being fitted. Here we have the guys from Hadley Kitchens, they've had a nice delivery, as you can see it's pretty cramped in here at the minute, which is to be expected because we've got lots of nice units going in. They're just fitting these base units around here at the minute, and then this wall all across here will all be floor to ceiling units, and then like I said the island in the middle. So we've got our nice time up set up up there, so you'll be able to watch these guys through the day and see how well they get on. So as you've just seen from the time lapse, the kitchen is nearly finished. Look at this, we've got some lovely units in here, got a freezer this side, full height freezer, two ovens, warmer drawer, fridge this size as well, we've got some tall ladder units here which are going to house a coffee machine, toaster, uh, loads of lovely units, lots of space in here for the clients. Dishwasher will be over there, there's going to be a cooker tap here and another sink here, hob will go here, extractor hood up there with our nice uh, surround that we're going to build. So basically, as you can see, we've got our nice oak uh, radius on here as well. This will sit on top of the worktop, just to give a nice little breakfast bar with some seating around it. We're going to replicate this up there. That's gonna, which will house the, uh, the cooker hood and we're also going to have some lighting around it. We've also got some lights to go in all underneath on this plinth that will go all the way around the perimeter of the kitchen and around this island as well which will set out a nice mood lighting from underneath there. So yeah, it's been some really good progress over the past couple of days. We've got some few finishing touches to get on with in here now. So as you can see the new nosing is in. What you might notice is there's quite a substantial overhang on there. What I've done is I've allowed for the skirting here to fly all the way underneath which will give us a nice flowing detail through there so obviously I've allowed that extra thickness here rather than just the 20 mil that we're going to need uh, so yeah that's that's pretty good that's that now so now my next step is to sort out this piece here because this obviously is damaged there so I'm going to probably get it back to the nearest joist here and then just piece that bit in there and then I will start on the skirting working on this nice detail around here to join in with the stairs and round here as well to join in with this round here somehow. So now what we need to overcome is sorting out all this skirting around this area. As you can see, here's one I blue peated and made earlier. This is going to be the detail that we're going to use. So this will carry on up here and round and then join into this skirting at the back, which I've got a nice stop return on there. And then this one, we're going to have to do a bit of modification here because when it's been done before, it's been a bit poorly done. All they've just done is put this bit of beading on like this. So what I'm going to do is actually chop this back to around here somewhere, continue this moulding on, fresh this down here with some new moulding which I'll rip down off this skirting, well not off this piece but off a piece of skirting, and then carry this moulding down into this then, so this will be a nice detail all the way around this string. And then again this will come round here, and then return down around that, the same profile as that, into here. 
So here's what I'm just currently making. So what we've done, as you can see, just deconstruct it. A few pieces like that, 45 degree there, then the return up, and then another 45 onto that. So that all locked in nicely. And then what I'll do is I'll notch around this nose in of this tread here. Just out the back here, you can see where these marks are. So I'll notch that out and then take this off, slide it back in over the front of the skirt and you get a nice, brilliant finish there. We'll glue all the back of it up so it will never move and there'll never be any cracks up here. So yeah, it's pretty good. I will, as usual, set the time lapse and you can see me doing this through the day. So I just wanted to explain why I've actually done this, why I've cut this piece out here. So I've already explained that this section here where this small bit of beading was, I'm going to use some of this timber here, this moulding here, and I'm going to run that down there into the new skirt in there. So here, if you remember, there was a bit of an angle cut which went into that bead. So what I want to make sure is that our new stuff runs in nicely to the existing. So what I'm going to do is the same principle here. I'm going to cut this moulding off the skirting, yeah, and then I'm going to piece that onto here. And by doing this, this enables me then to blend this in nicely with the existing skirting. Although we've had this mould ran off what was the existing skirting, so this should be pretty identical, there's always going to be a bit of discrepancy with a natural product. So as you can see, it's pretty damn close, but there will need to be a tiny amount of work just to get it to fit nicely. What we don't want to do is, once it's all decorated, you to be able to see, oh look, they've put a piece on there and they've put a piece on here. We want to make sure that it all runs through nicely. So by cutting this additional piece out here and putting a new piece in, it will give me that extra distance then from here to about here to actually plane this all in nicely, get it all sanded in, so, yeah, so it looks like one continuous piece all the way through. And then once it's decorated, you'll never know then that it's been an additional piece put on and then we've had to do repair work across here. So, as I mentioned to you before, I was doing this nice detail in here just to make it all run through nicely. And here is the finished product. I'll just blend it in there, like you can see, just so like I mentioned, you'll never know that it's an add-on. It comes down here into this nice detail here. And then I've done these nice detail here where it returns down onto the corner. And there's a nice detail over here as well, around the nose in, which is the same as that side. And what I'll do under here is just return the carpet round over this nose in and into there. So if you can see over here as well, what we've actually had to do is move one of the sockets up. Because of the detail of the skirting, it's meant the original height of the socket was actually wrong. So obviously we've had to move that up. But once this has all been decorated and filled nicely, you will never know. So guys, you've been with us on this journey for quite some time now in this project series, and one of the phases of this job is actually now fully complete. So let's take a look inside the bathroom. So as you can see, everything in here is done nicely. We've finished the whole thing, so the clients are now able to use this room. Take you through it a little bit. We've got this wall mirror here, oh yeah, which is a cupboard as well. We've got a light built into this. Beautiful little feature there. Nice and concealed, so all your toothbrush and stuff can go in there. Vanity unit with our wall taps. A wall hung, wall hung toilet with a concealed cistern in there. The freestanding bath as well with the freestanding taps. Also got these lovely pendants there with the Edison bulbs inside. And I'm sure you've noticed this awesome sculpture here, which is backlit as well. You can actually change the colours on that as well. So depending on what mood you're in, you can have different colours. It also does flashing and all sorts of stuff like that. It's a really, really nice piece that is, all made out of uh, brushed steel. Beautiful towel rail on the wall there as well. And if we walk into the shower room, the lights come on because they're censored as well. So we've got our nice cupboard with our lights underneath there. And obviously shower up there. So yeah, this is an amazing room, really nice space. The colours work really well with everything. There's underfloor heating in here as well, which if you check out some of our other videos, there should be a couple on there which show you the process of us doing this. Uh, I believe there's a video of us putting the underfloor heating down and also a video of us tiling it as well. Let's show you the toilet. So this is the additional toilet we've got in here as well. So again, we've got a wall hung toilet on there with a concealed system. Also got a nice LED strip in there. The mirror was already bought, but what we've done is put these lights on the back of it. So we've built a ply piece on the back, a circular piece, and then fitted an LED strip around it. So it radiates light from around it, which is really nice. We've got this awesome little toilet bar holder on the wall here as well, which is painted in with the, with the same color as the walls. 
colours in here are really striking as well. It's quite a dark colour, but it works really well. It makes everything else pop really well. Tiles again as well, awesome in here. Handles they've gone for is like a Victorian doorknob style to keep with the rest of the house. But they've gone for a white rather than brass. I think they're really nice, they look really good. The brush steel effect on those as well. Hopefully you'll agree, this room is looking amazing and the clients are really happy with it, as I'm sure you would be if it's in your house. So, this has been a long episode, there's been a lot going down, you've seen the floor going down, you've seen the tiling being done, you've seen plastering, you've seen the kitchen being fitted, and now you've seen the completed bathroom. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, while you're there, subscribe as well if you haven't already, turn on notifications so you can be notified every time that we release a new video. If you've got any comments or any questions about this video, or any of our other ones, just leave a comment and we'll get straight back to you. Take care, bye bye.